Hello, Data Pipeliners. Welcome back to another episode on Rite Data Pipelines with Kedro. I'm your host, Data Engineer One, and on this channel, we're helping data pipeliners write better data pipelines. Let me close my little things here. Okay. Today's episode we've got is for writing tests for your pipelines. So in the previous episode, we covered writing tests for your nodes. These are the elements that comprise a pipeline, but how do you actually test the entire pipeline together? And so testing a pipeline together is very similar to kind of like this integration tests or these end-to-end -end tests. It's important to make sure that each of the individual components works, but also it is important to see the entire stream work together as well. Uh, and so we're going to go and cover that in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to be using, again, the same pipeline from last time. This is the uh, intro to tests. Um, you can take a look at the previous video, but basically we wrote this uppercasing node function. And all this does is just uppercases all the letters inside of your nodes. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a pipeline using this node and then we want to be able to test that pipeline. So if you recall from a few videos back, Kedro supports uh, pipeline creation um, using the uh, pipeline, I mean, the Kedro CLI, um, which allows you to make these modular pipelines. And this makes it really easy to test. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. So we're going to type in the command line Kedro pipeline create, and then we can use whatever name we want to create here. And so we're going to create a letter counter pipeline. And so what this pipeline is going to do is it's going to take letters inside of a data frame and then just count all of them. Um, apparently, we already have a letter counter existing here. Let's go ahead and say letter counter to. I, I, I do have a letter counter, um, letter counter pipeline that I have as an example here. Uh, I think actually the issue was that I had already previously created the letter counter, but the um, some of the testing, some of the tests and parameters that they have uh, were uh, overwriting the original. Anyway, so we have here inside of our pipelines, our brand new letter counter pipeline. So if we reload this guy here, um, oh, that's strange. It seems like we created it multiple times. Uh, let's go ahead and just delete one of these guys uh, and we'll use this letter counter. So I guess the previous command run did run, that's okay. Um, and so here, uh, it starts with an empty pipeline. This is one of the cool things about the modular pipelines is that everything is just created for you completely fresh and brand new. Um, and so there's nothing in here. Let's go ahead and copy some code that I previously wrote. So we have our letter counter example. And this letter counter example will work as follows. So we are using the uppercaser you know, the uppercaser node from pre from the previous uh, video again. Um, I've just done a simplification and I'm just copying this node into this pipeline. So I'm just pretending that the node only exists inside of this pipeline. So right here, we can just replace this and we create our nodes and then we just need to import our data frame. So from pandas, import data frame. And so as you can see, again, it goes through each of the rows, each of the columns, and if the type is a string, it's going to count all the letters by by just doing a very simple sum using this um, using this dictionary here. Um, you could use counter uh, as a uh, the, the the counter library, uh, but I thought this was just as straightforward. Um, and then inside of our pipeline, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a pipeline that uses the uppercaser and the count letters. So what these guys do together is they um, we'll first do an uppercasing of all the letters inside of the nodes, um, sorry, inside of the data frames, in order to make sure that we're going to be counting the same letters, and then we're going to be using the count letters function here. But here's some where it gets a little bit interesting, and I want you to take a close look at this. For the pipeline itself, note that normally when you have this create pipeline, you have only like a, a star star args, a splat quarks argument here. So you can see it right here. This is the default. What I've done here is um, for in, in, in my practice, I found that using a very simple um, parameters to add into your create pipeline function makes it much easier to inject the data that you want as the input for your nodes, as well as the data that you want as the output for your nodes. And this makes it really, really easy in order to connect 
your modular pipelines together. And so here we have an inputs inputs uh, as well as an outputs outputs. And so basically what will happen here for this pipeline is that anything um, any data set that exists on the in on whatever the name is for the inputs here will be pulled into the uppercaser and then um, run through the pipeline until it goes to this outputs and it'll be saved to this outputs data set. Just makes it straightforward so you don't have to worry about finagling with your parameterization for your pipelines. Um, it just you just put it in right here. Of course, Kedro as in the modular pipelines again in the other video uh, does support this kind of um, replacement of your inputs and outputs. Um, but I think like in terms of like the overall main input and output, this is still a much easier uh, process. Um, so right here we have our basic pipeline. So that's really great. So how do we do the testing? Well, very simply what we can do here is we actually can just create a module inside of the letter counter folder for tests. And again, I'm using PyCharm for this. It makes it just so much easier to go ahead and do things like add to Git or just generate the things that we need. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create some, um, I'm going to create uh, some fixture data that we're going to want to use. So this is our base fi fixture data that can be reused amongst all of our tests. And so that happens inside of this folder called conf test. So you create this conf test. And the reason it happens instead of conf test, not folder, I'm sorry, Python file, is because that's just the way that PyTests work. So PyTests allows you to create your features, I'm sorry, fixtures inside of your, inside of this conf test, full, uh, conf test file that you can reuse a, a, around all of your tests. It makes it so much easier to write tests uh, because you can reuse your, your data. And so here I have our two fixtures. The first fixture is with the the basic data itself. So this is our pandas data frame. We're going to ignore the second one for now, um, but basically this is the data that we're going to be using for our tests. This should look familiar if you recall from our test nodes um, video previously. And so we can also create a test nodes um, uh, file here, which will then do, of course, the testing for our nodes. And you can see what that looks like when we're using the fixtures. So notice here that there's no fixture inside of this file, but we are still using um, the, the data by calling basic data as a function argument. And so the function argument here will automatically be populated by the fixture that has a matching function name. So basic data here as the function name will be the input for basic data here matching the function argument parameter. Um, and so you can see here, we have our uppercaser, which will just do the uppercasing, John, Mike, David, John, Mike, David. And then we have the count letters, which when taking the John, Mike, David data will output these counts, J-O-N-M-I-K-E, divad. Dev, <laughs> because we are repeating the I and repeating the D, of course. So when we run this, and again, PyCharm allows this, this uh, setup here. I'll just show you the configuration really quickly. You just make it so that um, you click Add here, Py, Python, Python Tests, PyTest, and then you can type in source, which is the main source of all of our code for the Ketro pipeline, uh, and then it will run here. Um, so when we click this run button, we should see that the tests ran perfectly. And of course, again, it's best practice to make sure that you test your test to ensure the tests are tested. So we're going to change the number from one to two, and it's going to fail. And so we can see the failure right here. And what's nice about PyCharm is that it gives you also a little diff, so you can even see the difference here, um, of where the difference is. I'm sorry, it's a little bit wide. It, the difference right here being um, highlighted the J in, in the expected uh, and versus the actual. Um, actually, the truth is that uh, the, the, that's because the uh, parameters are switched. So really, your actual is supposed to be on the left-hand side, and then the output is on the right-hand side. So it really should be rather than this. The convention is to have the output here. Of course, ostensibly, doesn't really matter <laughs> because you just want to make sure that your tests pass anyway. Now we're gonna go ahead and write our pipeline tests. Now this is the more interesting part here. So when we write a pipeline tests, a pipeline test, we need to be able to run the pipeline. But how do Kedra pipelines run? 
Well, Kedro pipelines run by using a catalog first. So you have your set of data that the pipeline uses. Then, of course, it has a, a pipeline for you to use on that catalog. This is the one that we're testing. And then finally, you need to have a runner. So Kedra uses these runners to run our pipelines. Um, we do have some videos also on sequential runner and a parallel runner as well. Um, and also in this st Twitter stream video, we do show a custom runner that can do um, streaming uh, data. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to create number one, a test catalog so that we can use with our runner. So let's go back into our conf test. We're gonna hit control Z because I deleted it earlier. And so we can see here, this is what the test catalog looks like. And notice here, this is really cool about PyTests. I'm reusing the basic data that I created inside of this fixture here. So this fixture's data becomes the database for this uh, basic catalog. And what I'm doing for the catalog very simply is I'm just creating a brand new data catalog with some data sets pre uh, pre created here. And the data set that we're creating is just our basic data data set. And this basic data is going to be the data set that holds the basic data from here, the John Mike David. And so you can see I create a, a new memory data set, which means it saves it in memory, doesn't write it anywhere. And then I, I use catalog itself to do a save to save our basic data input from the previous fixture into the basic data catalog entry, and then we return the catalog. Now, when we write the test, test pipeline, very simply, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the, the code that I wrote previously, we need to instantiate a runner. So we also create a runner here, and I'm using the sequential runner. And of course, there's two types of runners. You have your sequential runner and parallel runner. These are the ones that are built into Kedro um, for the purposes of this test. We're just gonna use sequential. Of course, we can always use parallel. And that can be one way where you can test whether or not your pipeline works between serial, I'm sorry, sequential and parallel processing. Okay. Um, and so here's where the benefit of our pipeline creation method comes into play. So remember, with our pipeline, what we did was we had our inputs and outputs so that we could explicitly specify the input data as well as the output data. Um, this becomes super convenient here because we can just create, um, we can just say, hey, pipeline, I want you to take your inputs from basic data. And basic data, of course, is the name of the data set inside of our catalog. And so we can so we could just tell the pipeline, hey, just take this basic data from our catalog. And then we can also use output name to determine where the output goes. Something cool here uh, is that, of course, PyCharm supports debugging. So we can actually go and step through this pipeline in order to watch how it does its running process. But I want to note that if you want to enable debugging for your Pine tests, make sure that you have no cov as your additional argument. This allows PyTest to, to, to skip the coverage tests because it's those coverage tests themselves that cannot interact or cannot play nicely with your PyCharm debugging. So make sure that you do dash dash no cov if you want to use your debug. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use debug mode. We're going to put a breakpoint right here and then we're going to click debug on the top and we're going to step through the pipeline. So we're going to run, run, run. It's going to load all the data, load all the all the tests and the nodes and the pipelines, and then we're going to hit our breakpoint right here. Let's go ahead and click the Step Into button, and we'll see we we are inside of the abstract runner class. And so we're going to go through and see how the abstract runner class works. Basically, what it does is it does these things where it will uh, load your data. Um, it makes a copy of the the catalog then it'll load the data from the catalog, um, and then it actually checks to see whether or not you've registered a data set. So in our case, for example, the outputs that we have, uh, not just free outputs, but these are the, again, the, the outputs that we're using. Um, the When we are looking for data sets inside of the pipeline, it checks to make sure that every data set exists in the catalog. If there are quote unquote unregistered data sets, these are the ones right here, then what it does is it creates a default data set for you. And so it happens right here. And so in the pipeline runner, it'll use the memory data set as the default data set. Um, and so of course, this just allows you to do our reading and writing. It's just a convenience method for Kedro. Um, and if you wanna use 
this in order to create specialized data sets by default, you can just override the runner method. And then finally, at the very end over here, we can just go through and skip as it runs through the pipeline. It does a run right here. Then it takes a look at the free outputs, right? So these are the final outputs of the pipeline um, that do not actually exist inside of the catalog. So these are the, um, the, the leaf outputs here. Um, and that's because uh, these leaf outputs are unregistered. So that's the reason why the pipeline wants you to use, I'm sorry, the pipeline is returning these values is because it knows, hey, wait a second, these outputs here, they don't have an actual final resting place. Let me make sure that this is not only, um, not only written to the catalog, but also returned from the pipeline. And so that's what we're taking advantage of here. Um, and so here we go, as we return back, we get our pipeline output and we can see inside of the debugger, our pipeline outputs contains the outputs, which is of course that free data set um, that doesn't have a specified output inside of the catalog. And when we run the rest of this, we can see that of course, it looks like it matches. And so when we run, um, we can remove our breakpoint and we finish the run and we get, oh, we actually get an incorrect test result. And that's because I believe that we actually didn't return this one value. Uh, we didn't actually put that back. But when we rerun this again, we can see that, um, of course, the pipeline works. And again, best practice is to check uh, your, that your test works, but make sure that you fix the test again after you break the test. And so that's what I did not do last time. And I think that that's all for the pipeline here. So if you guys enjoy this content, if you think this is useful for you, best way that you guys can support this channel is if you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.